okay. So let me, let me just state that. The, the weak form is the basis of the finite element method and because this is sort of the first time we are writing the term, I will capitalize it. Okay, it's the basis of the finite element method uh, and of other variationally based numerical methods. The term variational may be new to you. You will, um, before too long, know what that means, okay? Just take it from now, for now, okay? So this is really the basis of the finite element method, okay? The very first thing I'm going to do is uh, demonstrate to you um, the uh, equivalence between the strong form and the weak form, okay? So let me state that here. Uh, the claim is that the strong form the strong form and the weak form are equivalent. Okay? What that means is that one implies the other. So the strong form implies the weak form and importantly the weak form implies the strong form. Okay? So let me I'll write that out. The strong form implies the weak form, and importantly, the weak form also implies the strong form. Okay? We're going to set out to show this, and uh, it turns out that the first step is actually quite easy to show, this first step being the strong form implying the weak form. Okay, so we'll take that approach. Okay, so consider the strong form. Right? We know the strong form, so I'm not going to write it out in great detail. I'm only going to uh, write out the essential uh, ingredients of it, right? And the most essential ingredient is the PDE itself, right? So that is ddx of sigma plus f equals 0 in 0 comma l with the boundary conditions bc for short. Now, the boundary conditions we have are the following. u at 0 equals u naught, right? Now, because we've, we've written out the weak form for a single Dirichlet boundary condition only at x equals 0, that's what we have to assume for the strong form as well, right? We need to consider that strong form. We can't have different boundary conditions in the strong form and expect it to lead to the weak form that we wrote, okay? So, the boundary condition at x equals L is sigma at L equals T, right? Uh, and we need to remind ourselves that we also have the constitutive relation, right? Sigma equals E U comma X, okay? So this is where we start out. What we're going to demonstrate now is that this leads to the weak form. And to do that, we will uh, proceed as follows. Uh, what we're going to do is introduce W, just like we did back there, right? W belonging to V, right? Uh, the space V, uh, which consists of all functions W such that W at 0 equals 0, right? As we discussed previously, W satisfies a homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition, right? Any place we have a Dirichlet boundary condition, W must satisfy a 
homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition. Now, um, what we will do is the following. We're going to treat W as a weighting function, right? In fact, W does get called in the context that we are developing here. W is indeed called the weighting function. Okay? And I'm going to use it indeed like a weighting function. I'm going to multiply W into our strong form. Okay? So what I'm doing here is multiply strong form by W. And now integrate. Right? And integrate over the interval 0 to L. Okay? So integrate 0 to L, 0 to L. The right hand side, of course, stays equal to 0. Okay? Um, also, because uh, we have this, um, we introduce the area, right? So I'm going to sneak the area also into this uh, multiplication here, okay? And then I integrate it over the domain of interest, okay? Because the right-hand side is zero, of course, it stays at zero, okay? So we have this form, and uh, now this would work, okay? But really, we haven't done anything special. What we're going to do next is use a um, very common technique in uh, calculus, in integral and differential calculus, which is called uh, integration by parts, okay? So I'm going to say that here. Integrate by parts. Now, in integrating by parts, what we're going to do is act upon that derivative, all right? When we do this, we get the following form, right? When we apply integration by parts, we get minus integral 0 to L W comma X sigma A dx plus w sigma a evaluated at 0 and l plus integral 0 to l w a f dx equals 0. Okay? In integrating by parts, if uh, this is a step that is probably familiar to all of you, we have done that. Okay? That is the common integration by parts step. Okay? And if this is something that doesn't seem terribly familiar to you, recall that integration by parts involves two steps. Right? It involves uh, the product rule of differentiation right? um, and what is referred to in higher dimensions as the Gauss divergence theorem, but in lower dimensions, it is simply the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? All right? It's not a difficult exercise to do. It's actually quite trivial. Okay, so we have this form now. 
let us focus attention upon that term, okay, right. Um, let me rewrite this as follows. Uh, let me write it now as, uh, let me do two things. Let me move this term to the other side of the equation, okay, right. But then let me write the other side of the equation first. So effectively what I am getting here is the following. I get integral 0 to L W comma X sigma A DX equals integral 0 to L W F A DX plus W sigma A at 0 and L, okay, all right, okay, um, let me go to the next slide and simplify it. Before doing that, let me just, just go back here for a second. If you look at the very last term of the last equation on this slide, um, we observe that it involves that term being evaluated at two limits, 0 and L, okay? And so that gives us integral 0 to L W comma X sigma A DX equals integral 0 to L W F A DX plus W at L sigma at L A minus W at 0, sigma at 0, A. I simply expanded out that last term, okay? Now, if we stare at this very carefully, one should be able to say something special about this very last term here. What can we say? Think about it for a few seconds. In particular, what do we know about W at 0? Remember, we have a homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition on the weighting function, right? So that factor is equal to 0, okay? Which gives us then our final weak form, which when we also observe that in addition, we know something about sigma at L, okay? which is that sigma at L is equal to T, okay? The fact that W at 0 is equal to 0 comes from the homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition on W, okay? DIR is short for Dirichlet. The fact that sigma at L equals T comes from the Neumann boundary condition, right, on the strong form, okay? So when we do all of this, we get our final weak form, integral 0 to L, W comma X, sigma A dx, equals integral 0 to L W F A DX plus W at L T times A, okay? This is our weak form of the linear partial differential equation of elliptic form in one dimension, okay? And you observed that we started with the strong form and essentially obtained this weak form, okay? Um, it is indeed the weak form we wrote out because W, this weighting function that we'd introduced in the weak form, does indeed satisfy all the conditions we'd assumed of it when we specified the weak form. In particular, we have this homogeneous boundary condition on W, right? And the fact that we started from the strong form allowed us to bring in the Neumann boundary condition on sigma. Right? Okay, we'll stop the segment here.